It's a war outside. It's a war outside. It's a war outside. And everybody acting like they don't see it. Off the shit I ponder, journey of a million miles. Our first guest for episode 100. Video edition video on YouTube. Edition, yeah. Tap in with our YouTube right now. Like subscribe. And subscribe. Like and subscribe. I, <laughs> like and subscribe our YouTube channel for fresh new content. That's, that's how YouTubers be. Like, hit the like <laughs> button. Well, there's a subscribe button. That's what we need. Them niggas be bracketing that. <laughs> hit that copy link and tweet it out. And you know, <laughs> shit, I, I'm trying to go platinum on YouTube. Is that what I got myself into today? Dang. Platinum <laughs> <laughs> edition. I would have changed my earring. I mean, this episode 100, this a, this a big one. People now, I mean, you, we've done two episodes with you. So now maybe for the folks who, you know, they can put a face to the name. For the hey. folks who, who haven't, uh, you know, seen us post you on Instagram or, you know, don't follow your work. Uh, now they can put a face. Y'all should check it out. Real dope. RJ Practitioner. RJ Consultant. With a writer, teacher, Melissa Moran. How's everybody out there? What's up, YouTube? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so for this episode, we got a bunch of our favorite guests, our favorite guests like me and like me and Blake's. Uh, we don't know if it's y'all's favorite guests, you know, the listener or viewer, but we're going to have them come on. We're just going to chop game for a little bit. It's an opportunity for us to, you know, continue to center community in our shit. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. especially what we said in the uh, audio version of episode 100 is like this podcast is a you know is a result of community in a lot of ways you know what I'm saying in terms of how we even made it here it's been community supporting us so it's it's something right for episode 100 you feel me we got community on this thing our, our supporters and, and people who helped you know shape us into who we are today and how we grow you know we ain't I ain't no individualism over here. You feel me? We a, we a collective. We a community. You feel me? And then that's how we really gonna get free. So I'm I'm juiced for this for sure. All right, let's kick it off. We could tell you what we've enjoyed, you know, about working with Melissa and have you on the on the podcast. But what what have you enjoyed about working with us um, as you've been now a guest for the third time? <laughs> Trifecta. I mean, I feel so special. You know, truthfully, this is this is the thing, right? Like, the thing that I actually love about your podcast, just overall, is just how scrappy it is. And I like scrappy, all like, oh, it's just put together. We don't put no thought into it. It's like it's the exact opposite. It's like you put all all kind of thought into it. Um, there's so much heart in it, and then also it's just like two dudes from the block who are just hanging out right, who are just like having a conversation that's so relatable, right? Like I, like I've, so I, I've shared this podcast now with, with a couple of folks and, you know, uh, like with my nephew and some other people. And that's always the first thing is like, oh, I learned so much. And it was just so relatable, you know, in this kind of world of the most mayonnaise based podcast, like <laughs> this American white all over the place, like all day long. And, and y'all are just like, oh, hey, like we're just out here being people and also let's kick some real facts and that's i mean so it's like anytime i come on i'm just like oh yeah all right i'm just gonna go hang out the hell back for a little bit you <laughs> just know gonna talk chop game learn, yeah bill you feel me and it's yeah it, it i think honestly that's my favorite my favorite part of just like being being on here this is why i'm on here today hey i really enjoy like we learn so much from you um I learn a lot from from the guests that come on to come on to this shit, but it's usually we talking about topics that I have like some foundational um, understanding of, you know, like I think the RJ TJ shit was the first time where it was like I had no, I thought I knew what I was talking about um, via the ways that I was introduced to it, you know, and then linking up with you, I'm like, oh, I don't know shit, <laughs> and then I realized. <laughs> A lot of people don't know shit when they talk about RJ. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that part. Yeah, I'm like, a lot of people don't know what the fuck yeah. they're talking about. Yeah, nice. Nah, it reminds me we had Khadijah on a 
for episode 99 that hasn't came out yet. Um, but Khadija was talking about like, why it's so important to go to like a primary source. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. so many people, especially these days with social media and, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, this is that. And like you read it from a tweet and didn't fact check that tweet. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you could have some whole RJ concept in your mind, but really it's not RJ and it's on some carceral shit or something like that, you know, but I'm definitely very appreciative of, uh, of the work that we've been able to do together and how it's helped me in my own life. You know what I'm saying? And just how I view myself, how I view the people, how I view other people, you know what I'm saying? Like it's shit is definitely something that is, uh, I would say like internally liberating, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, yeah, I appreciate you. I respect I game up that. With us and, and teaching us, you know, and learning with us. I mean, that's the other piece too, right? Like, like I'm working with y'all and then I am also learning like this is, it's the whole, the whole point of any sort of radical process, right? Is that it's never static. It's never like, okay, well, here I circle. am. I'm, it's that circle. <laughs> right? They just keep going. Yeah, but and, yeah. And the other part is you're one of the guests who, um, whose episode has directly impacted our organizing or has like come to like also build with us off the pod, right? Like you came and did some workshops um, for people's programs. And now that shit is one, I'm like, niggas have changed the way, like you just see so much more intention in our organization. Um, The way that we talk to each other, the way that we engage in the community, like I feel like we've always moved from a a principal place, um, centered the politic, centered, you know, pro-black, pro-Africa. Uh, but now it's like, there, there's just a different level of, inten- of intention of like, you know, treating your people with love and care. Uh, and so that, that's something I've really been able to value too, is like, we took that shit from these podcast episodes. It's like, all right, nah, my nigga, we finna take this and put it into the community too. Yeah. And that was, I have to say, that was some, some, some of the deepest work I did this year, I feel like was with people's programs. And just, and not just the two of you, but like the whole, the whole organization, like the way that folks show up. And I mean, you're right. It's, it's what we talk about in the podcast is what we talk about in the trainings. It's like, everything is, it's, it's so based around like whether or not you're going to really show up and the way that folks showed up and just stepped into the work. Like that work was heavy, right? Like my shoulders hurt for a day and I was just facilitating some learning, but y'all were like really doing some heavy lifting. It was and, and you could see it, you know, like you could just kind of like see that, see folks just really start to embrace learning. And it's, again, I mean, to not like, I don't want anybody to come on here and just think I'm pandering to y'all, but like the piece that's so deep about your podcast is how actually like, like how, how much you are centering learning in an alternative way of educating folks, right? Like education doesn't have to happen inside of schools. It didn't have to happen inside of a classroom, but like, you know, in the way that, that y'all will be like, I don't know about this. So here's a guest who's going to talk about it, right? Like, I, I was thinking about that, like, Fatness and Pride episode. It's like, maybe I don't know too much about it, but now I'm going to have somebody on here and we're going to chop it up and we're going to talk about the ways in which I got to learn, the ways in which we can all grow and, ch- and stretch. And, you know, that's the work. That's the work yeah, definitely. Because I feel like for me, from episode one to episode 100, it's like it's a constant process of always trying to decolonize my mind. And it's not like, oh, you reached this spot, you reached this height, and now it's like, you're woke. It's like, nah, bro, like, you got to always constantly decolonize, 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 because, you know, as much as we read, and it's like, we being fed propaganda every single day when we go outside, when we go to a grocery store, when we get our coffee, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's one thing I really love about this for myself and my own personal transformation is like the constant, like, all right, reflection and decolonizing, like, what do I think I know? Like, ooh, do I really know that? Like, do I really know everything that I'm saying? Or like, am I just regurgitating something? And like having that critical self-reflection at all times, like, all right, hmm, I need to pick this yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need, ooh, I need to brush up on these skills. Ooh, I need to go revisit the PowerPoint. You feel me? <laughs> and recheck it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm making sure I'm, I'm constantly aligned with the politic and the principles that it, that it comes with. That's right. It's like in the training, what we're talking about, like truly there's nothing, there's no such thing as objectivity. There's just like subjectivity and context. So you're just constantly learning, reassessing, learning, growing. I love it. All right. Melissa Marin for the people. Hella Black, episode 100. Appreciate you coming to fuck with us. All my love, all my gratitude. Good luck on your 100th episode. Appreciate it. All right. See y'all in the community.
All right, peace. <laughs> peace. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Glad you can make it, man. You was having some some difficulty finding that the Zoom. <laughs> nah, nah, nigga. It wasn't me having difficulty finding it. <laughs> the link. Hey, yo, uh, yo, double OG or your, your OG status is showing, man. Nah, nah, <laughs> Delincey did not send that shit. I didn't see it. Come on, man. Don't That's all I'm. Hey. <laughs> hey <man. laughs> so, my nigga, how you doing? Man, I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm good, man. How y'all doing? It's good, man. I'm good as can be. You know, sun out. Episode 100, you feel me? So, hit a little milestone. That's a hell of a milestone, man. Shit. I, I, I remember when y'all first started, man, and uh, you all you all spoke to it uh, in one of your previous episodes, but it was like the idea that's like, man, we just going to crank these shits out. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, the me watching the growth and how y'all approach this space and to maneuver in it and to continue to evolve in your process and the ways in which you approach it um, speaks volumes about your dedication to other spaces. You know what I'm saying? Like as you've grown as podcasters, you've also, the organization that you guys are, 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 are chairing has grown as well. And the ways in which y'all tap into the community has grown. So it's like, it's all growing in unison. So I think it's some dope ass shit. So this hundred episode is not just important and monumental in the sense of the number, but also it, as, as a reminder of y'all growth. You know what I'm saying? Just as, as comrades, as friends, as, as um, mediators of media, as people tapping into the field and, and making sure that, that, that all these people are in conversation with each other. So man, it's some dope shit. Hell yeah. I, I don't know if you did, was left on the the surprise episode? I can't um, remember. Well, we basically did, they did like a surprise for us like a year. You, ago. I think it was on. Was you on it? The surprise episode? Nah, y'all didn't surprise me with that. Nah, well, they, we were we was the one surprised. surprised so. <laughs> I bring that up to say like it was people you know saying what the podcast meant to them, and I had to listen to that shit earlier this week, and I had to turn it off because I damn near started crying. And so for you to say that, I feel the same way. Like a nigga got to you know. Keep his composure right now. We on camera and shit. <laughs> I might, I might cry in the shower when this. Hey, bro. Up. I would. No, I was really thinking though too. Like, like, bro, I was really your student. You feel me? <laughs> like, young nah. black at Cal that was just kind of hyphy and you feel me. Didn't give a fuck with Milton just talking shit. And then now I'm, I'm thinking about like my own transformation over those. What it's almost been six years, seven years. Some shit yeah. like that. Young, like, young Blake, young um. Young rugby high top fame Blake. Yeah, <laughs> young rugby high top fame Blake. Now, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> dude, that shit, like, to see that transformation and to see that you are both of y'all, y'all are continuing on this transformation. And and I would encourage you, uh, see, There's this song in my one of my favorite. So today is Marvin Gaye's birthday. Uh, one of my favorite songs is from one of these albums he has. It's called um, Vulnerability. And the album is just hella tender. And one of the songs he has, that's one of my favorite songs personally, is um, he talks about She Needs Me. But it, within the record, he's talking about how much he needs his, his person too. Like that's the give and take. It's like, but the reason I say that is that one of the most powerful tools that I've developed in my life, um, coming up out of Richmond, like during a, in a very grimy era, is the ability to be vulnerable. Like the ability to cry, the ability to be sensitive and, and not have my sensitivity um, articulated to me in a way that is to use the buzzword of the last five years that is toxic to my existence. Um, it's helped me, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I remember being that, that nigga that's like, nigga, I don't cry about shit. I mean, I could take a, I could take a, a train to hit me type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I felt as if I didn't have the right to cry or to feel and to feel as human. And 
at some point, not saying this is what you're doing in that, but it's like, man, I, man, I've known, man, I, I busted out crying in lectures because I really meant what the fuck I was teaching on and talking about. I've done that shit in conversation because it's like, no, this shit is so real to me that I can't. And if I conceal this pain, you won't really get how I fucking feel. And in some ways I'm robbing the person that I'm trying to convey a message to of how serious it is to me. And so, man, if you, if this, this hundredth episode that y'all are reflecting on brings you to that point, let that shit go. Because this is, you, it deserves that amount of fucking vulnerability, care, and recognition. Like, this is a monumental thing y'all did. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Blake, I'm looking at you as my student, my former student, my comrade, my partner. And your growth is one of the dopest things in my catalogs of things that I've been involved in. Like, I think it's always one of the things I, I honor is that my grandmother is able to brag on me like that's my grandbaby. <laughs> and my my OGs is able to say, hey, man, that's I, I did them a service because they can say I invested into him and look what the fuck I produced out of him. I'm a part of that. Everything y'all do. And I tell y'all this shit on the camera and off the camera. You know it. Man, every time y'all y'all do what y'all do, I'm going to always rock with y'all, front-facing the camera and behind the scenes regardless. And every time y'all grow, man, that shit make me feel good because I know I'm a part of the soil that the seed was planted in. And um, seeing y'all helping houseless communities, like, you know, man, my, my, my parents were houseless, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and to see that y'all came up and did something bigger than what I was doing. I, th th there is a, a zero amount of envy. That's one of the problems with a lot of people, their egos get involved and their, their envy doesn't allow them to acknowledge when other people are doing great things instead of being a part of it. Instead of being like, man, I'm so glad they did that dope shit. Cause I didn't, I wasn't able to do it. And, it, it, and now I can just support the fuck out of it. So, so man, on that shit, man, this hundredth episode, man, I'm honored to be on it, and I'm honored to watch y'all grow. Yeah, I, I appreciate you, um, cause I think both of us reduce it sometimes to like not just the 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 number of episodes, but I think we reduce the podcast sometimes to not really um, align it with all the other shit we got going on. I think other people reduce it too. It's like I don't think niggas gotta realize how much studying we gotta do to say some of the shit we gotta say. I don't think niggas know how much of a burden it is, it is to have the to have something instilled in you that if you learn something, you must act upon it. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, that shit is hard ass work to be like, oh boy, now I know what I'm supposed to do. I gotta go out here and build this <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go right. out here. And like, it, it is, it's literally, as mm. we've grown in here, you've watched other programs launch. Like, niggas read, we are on liberators and like, oh no, we need to be supporting this political prisoner shit. Like, period, you feel me? And like, now how do we do that? Niggas read, um, are, are we reading, you know, Asada Shakur, Revolutionary Suicide, George Jackson, and we like, oh, nigga, we need to have a clinic. So we think it's reading about food autonomy, oh, we need to have a garden. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, there have been programs that have been birthed as a direct result of our political education, and this podcast has been a vessel of our political education. And, and just even seeing the way the program has grown, you feel me? Like, we're doing recording our 100 episode today, and like, we just dropped our, our new logo and our explanation for our new logo. And again, that's showing like the political growth of our organization. Cause as the pod has grown, our organizing has grown too, which I'm, I'm super proud of, you know what I'm saying? Cause like the very foundation of the podcast was like, we in West Oakland at this old shipment container, like, bro, we talking all this shit. Like we got to do something, bro. Like <laughs> we got to be outside, you know what I'm saying? We got to really be in the community, you know, and having that, seeing those, uh, how student organizing is oftentimes, you know, just elitist and like, bro, we gotta, we gotta be outside really. What the fuck is, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, I, I appreciate you, bro. And all, all the, the love and, and the mentorship, you know, you've given me over the years, bro. That shit, that shit mean a lot, bro. It should mean a lot to me. Oh, man, I, I like, agree. I don't even know if I would've got through Cal, bro. <laughs> like on some real shit, on some real shit, bro. But you know what? And I, it's funny, I was talking about it last night. I wouldn't have a doctor if it wasn't for Professor, for Professor Allen. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, if it weren't for OGs like uh, 
Professor Fry, Hardy Fry. Like Hardy Fry was the one who was like, from, from what I understand, he was one of the people that's like, hey man, this dude is a true organic intellectual and he has to be in this program. If we really talking this shit, the theory versus praxis and organic intellectualism and all these things that we talking about, there's no way that Amir couldn't be a part of this program. And so when I saw people like, like that, the OGs put, they put that vouch on me, man, it was no way I was going to fucking fail. Cause I, I had some, some, some OGs to honor that they put their neck on the line for me, man. And like, again, man, watching y'all grow, uh, watching like your fight to get for people to recognize and acknowledge your uncle and his, his, his time as, as a prisoner of war and to see him out and to see your pictures and to see you, y'all too, were two of the major vessels in, that use y'all platforms to make sure that his name was ringing in, in the streets and he's free. Man, th seeing that shit happen and, and the conversations we would have behind the scenes, man, that, 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 that's real shit. That's not paycheck shit. That's not big check shit. That's not product endorsement shit. That's real shit. Like if you, and we've talked about this before, if you have, a organization or a movement that is rooted in the supposed liberation of black folks, but you ain't got no energy for the political prisoners, the black prisoners of war who was fighting this anti this war of anti-blackness waged by the US government against black folks in the communities. Your shit is for show. It's puffery. That shit is to get to, to get on to leverage, to turn into something that has the aesthetic of revolution, but has the undercurrents of capitalism. And in studying all the people that we supposedly love, man, a lot of them died without having a lot. They really were making sacrifices, a sacrifice that, that was not coupled with coming up or getting the bag like getting the bag wasn't in, in Malcolm X's mind like I gotta get the bag that doesn't mean you can't earn money to help fund your movement and keep things going but there's a difference between that and what some of these other folks are doing yeah. they all getting called to the carpet now and and and, and, and what I appreciated about what y'all have done has always been true to the essence of grassroots building organizing tapping in being in the field and actually doing the work because the work has to be done so when i said like that not, not that long ago help the people that help the people i'm talking about motherfuckers like y'all because you are actually out there helping the people you're giving them the same food you would eat that's real love and if you can't have love at the, the, the fucking, the root of your black liberatory resistance, then it's not real. Like real love means you want them to have what you have. And I, I'm honored that that has been a part of the ways in which y'all moved. And, and I'm out here to give out flowers for this 100th episode because y'all don't do it for y'all selves sometimes. And I know how that is. And usually folks in y'all position get fucked over by people because you really care about the people. But the people got to care about y'all. I mean, I love y'all. And um, I hope that people understand that a way in which y'all show that y'all love y'all selves is by showing love to the people. Love you too, fam. Appreciate you. Love you, bro. Appreciate you. For real. So my niggas, you got the neighbor program yeah, ripping hard in the background coming through. You feel me? My nigga on that hey, hey, I learned it from Jaleel. <laughs> I was in class and he had his thing. Oh, yeah, right he had the oh, falling on back. Yeah, to turn up. <laughs> you got them fresh braids too. You know what I'm saying? Went to my little cousin. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I want braids so bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, for me, it's really like this evolution back to myself, bruh. I want braids. This nigga said I want them so bad. So badly. You niggas cannot imagine how bad I want braids. Are you being serious or not? Nigga, I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Grow your hair out, nigga. Bro, that shit takes so long. Bro, your hair, bro, you can get braids. That's how I feel about that's how I feel about getting a grill. Like I wanted it for so long, and I just be like, I I still just don't get it, bruh. Bruh, nah. For one, y'all are both. I don't know if you multiracial, Jordan. You are, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, I'm 1,000 <laughs> percent African. Pure African. I've heard this nigga. before. <laughs> pure African, nigga. <laughs> pure. <laughs> and now my, or I'm, Which I'm means a, your hair actually gonna braid better, bro. It's gonna braid better, but you facts. Know, facts. facts. I don't want to grow. Hey, nah, no, no lie. I'm, I'll be lying though, because my great great grandmother has like some white and. Native in her, but so I got a little bit of something in me, but it ain't in my hair, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't in my hair. Nigga said, I got that faux C. <laughs> bro, oh God, dude. straight course. Uh, straight course. Bro, you should braid it, bro. When? Let, let it grow, bro. Let I'm gonna grow. try my hardest. Let it grow. I'm gonna try my hardest. Twist it, twist it and let it grow, you know what I'm saying, from there. I had to twist that Idaho. You did, <laughs> you I did. To, I had to do it yourself was. You did have those. <laughs> I had to do it those was rough for hey, you. Your pop still growing dreads? Yeah, his shit long. Me and my dad don't have the same grade of hair though. Yeah. Like, cause I, cause I think it's that generation. You know what I'm saying? Like he was oh, a generation closer to my to my great grandmother. So it's yeah. Shit. One thing I'm not gonna do is go bald though. So it's a give to take. Like, okay, it takes a long time for my hair to grow, but my dad's hairline is still fully intact, yeah. and he has impeccable, impeccable. Yeah, he has a full head of hair. Yeah. But I'm nigga, glad nigga, we got growing, you. nigga growing dreads at, yeah, what, at, 50. at 50. Like just start growing his shit look yeah. like 18 his type shit. Yeah. <laughs> like shit just growing. Wow. But besides the point of doing some one of braids, bro, how you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm happy to be with y'all, bro. I'm happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? Um it's always good to be in a space with y'all, man. Y'all my niggas, and that's 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 it. <laughs> yeah, you you of all the guests that we have on today. Um, you're the only guest that hasn't actually been on the pie yet, but we're gonna make that happen for sure. Yeah, you was low key on it though in the uh, what the, the live episode, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, we recorded that. I think that was post, yeah, but I'm so saying like we, we, ain't, like, yeah, we ain't sat down like broke bread, yeah, and like gave a chance to you know, um, give a full background on you, and but that's gonna happen for, sure, for, sure. for the sake of this episode. We, we could keep it, you know, fairly short. It's my nigga Jordan, uh. Organizing down SAC neighbor program, a big supporter of Hella Black Pod, uh, one of my longest standing friends. Met my nigga my freshman year of college, which was like nine years ago, maybe. Damn, 10 years. Yeah, it was 2010, right? 2010, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 11, like 10 years ago. Um, my nigga doing some really good work out of SAC, though. Appreciate you, bro. I'm glad you own, bro. Like, I was, we was just talking to left before you got on and I'm, you know, we was telling them how, y- how y'all need to meet um, and that y'all are two niggas that, that we know that um, take theory and put it into practice. And so, yeah, bro, we got a lot of respect for you. I'm glad to have you on. Tell the people Appreciate about neighbor program and what y'all do. Yeah. So, you no, know, uh, we just trying to, we trying to carry on in the spirit of our ancestors, of our revolutionaries, you know what I'm saying? The people that we claim that we say are, our ancestors, right? Like niggas love to say, this is where we come from or this is where we uh, are building on, but you really got to take that in and really apply that, like you said. Uh, it was really y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always credit y'all for it. Like, waking my game up, right? Like, I, you know, I, I grew up around the politic, you know, in my family, um, you know, similar to y'all. Um, and, you know, that's how we clicked and linked up right away, rolling, um, but you know, just you get you get in your little flows of life. You feel me? And trying to be caught up as a as a co- as a ball player and then a coach. You feel me? I was trying to I was trying to be on my hustle and, um, you know, again like supported y'all and was like wanted to tap in, but never just dove in. You know, never just said I'm jump off the deep end. Um, but like watching what y'all did in the pandemic, bro, was just like it was too it was too inspiring. It was. You know, you know, I'm a hustle fan. You know, it was you was running too many laps on me, bro. And that's, <laughs> that's what it was. You just and I was like, and again, I've always taken a, 
a deep love for you as my little bruh. You know what I'm saying? I know, and I know B would like said that he was like, little bruh, roll it like, you know, that's the relationship that you and me have. And so watching you, bruh, is, is like, my nigga running, my nigga running laps on me. Like, let me, and now, you know, and as your big bro, I, would ne- I should never let that happen. Right. And going back to what I was always trying to teach you on the field, like, like, nigga, this is how we got to do it. This is how you're supposed to do it. And you showing me and I'm like, ah, yeah, let me let me let me let me get back in. Let me rock. And again, in that process, I'm able to to find out even more about my family, more about even like my wife's family, just how it's all connected. right? And um, it it, it humbles you and it, it reminds you of who we are indigenously, like. You know what I'm saying from this decolonized system, who like this work that I'm that that I'm doing, that you're doing, that we're all doing. This is carrying on from our ancestors. This is carrying on from the elders. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, Blake is blessed to have family in Jaleel, and we're all able to now meet him and have him as a mentor and an elder that guides us, right? And that shit is beautiful. And that again goes back to the continent and how we all grow like that. And so. Um, Neighbor program just tries to get us back to that shit. And again, it's it's observation and participation. Uh, just trying to run laps like you niggas. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, that's what you're saying. Like, niggas are really, that's our, our root, bro. It's like our real root. <laughs> it's the African way. The shit we doing. You feel me? It's getting back, you know, to 500 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not to put it in no utopian sense. There's still problems. You know what I'm saying? But like, we getting back to our true selves. Community, uh, intercommunal you know, taking care of each other, you feel me? And that's that's the process of decolonization, you know, but definitely one thing I admire you, I know you've always been a big supporter of Hella Black, but you was like, all right, bro, I got to do this shit. You feel me? Like you listening, you listen, all right, yeah, I got to do this shit. You know, you took that theory into action, you know, and that that's one thing I'm proud of from the show is like, when I, whenever I hear someone say, hey, we learned this, and then we took that shit into action and made shit happen, we fed people. We got a program going, you know what I'm saying? And we've been able to link with our different programs and y'all been able to come out to Oakland and shit. Like that shit, man, that shit deep. That shit in, should not be taken lightly, in my opinion. Like that shit, some real like political ties, bro. That we shit. talking about nation building. Yeah, right? we, we talking about like- we, we exchanging resources, you feel me? We had cheese for niggas. Y'all like, oh, we got a resource for y'all. Like, you know, we can help y'all kick off y'all, y'all, y'all little newsletter. You feel me? Like we could, that's the, that's what niggas, if we, we love- That's how niggas up, need to be operating, love bro. bringing up Nkrumah, you feel <laughs> me? Like, them niggas was, was out there building across the continent. Like, all right, these Cox. these fucking Europeans finna take away our resources. Nigga, y'all got rice? Well, shit, my nigga, we got cock. You feel me? This is what we doing over here. Y'all niggas got some money to help, you feel me, fund our meals. Nigga, we gonna repay y'all by helping y'all. You feel me? We gonna give y'all a spot in our newsletter. We gonna help y'all get y'all propaganda out to the people. Like, bro, that's... that's Inner communalism in action. Come on. We exactly, doing and I was gonna say right now, like, um, I don't know what it is. I kind of fell off, like... It was like a three week period, and you know, I just had the baby and shit. So I think you had a kid, bro. You <laughs> fell off, bro. You just had another child, bro. So, <laughs> so I fell off reading. Like, I, like I would be trying to read, bro. It didn't matter if it was a book on my phone. Like, I just start falling asleep, bro. And I'm like, ah, bro, I can't be cat like this. So I was like, let me get on this audio book. So I jumped on um, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Walter from, Rodney, yeah, bro. And I'm like, and it, like you said, like it's all going back to this communalism. Right. And, and, you know, I'm a huge Toure fan. Like he always talks about communalism and like how it was disrupted. Right. And so, like you said, bro, it's this idea that we're all, we're all together connected as this colonized group. Right. And we have to, to fight this shit um, together. And, and, but it's all about, again, people coming together. And, And I think that's the thing. Like everyone always is like, Oh, y'all hella mad. Y'all hella violent. Um, you don't believe, you know, you're this, you're that, you're cynical, but it's really out of this love. Like we believe in loving people, right? Like that shit can actually change the world. That's what we really believe in. Yeah. That's left was literally just talking about that. Like, <laughs> it shit gotta be rooted in love. At the end of the day, man, you can't spell revolution without love. You can't spell revolutionaries without Aries, you know what I'm saying? But you know, that's the yeah, side point. You don't come with that <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, Teray says you have to build an undying love for the people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Cause that's gonna get you through all the hard shit. You feel me? It's like, if you have, if your principle and your politic and you putting that shit in command and your love is for the people, you are going to do what it takes for liberation. That means the hard conversations, the restorative conversations, 
That means the long nights. You feel me? That means working when you don't really want to work no more. You know what I'm saying? And not Man, on some that's... like fucking mule shit, but on some like, nah, bro, you got to have an undying love and commitment to your people for liberation. If we fight against one of the most powerful empires that humanity has ever known, <laughs> our United Force got to be loved, bro, because they got all the weapons. They got all the drones. I mean, they got all the ships, you feel me? Like, they got all the tracking devices, bro. So, but our love and our unity is more powerful than any imperialist weapon. I, I truly believe that. Truly believe that. And I think, and I know, and I think that's what, for me, um, I know everybody be on their own different uh, religious or spiritual kick. But for me, like, as a Christian, like, that's how I'm able to root myself. Like, if I'm supposed to say I believe in Jesus, this nigga served the people and loved the people so much he, you know, he gave himself, like, in my belief, like, nigga, who am I to not try to follow in that footstep if that's what I say I believe in, right? So if I, I get saying, if I say I believe in the Panthers, I gotta do exactly what they was doing. I can't be out here faking the funk, you know what I'm saying, BSing. I can't just be saying this shit. I mean, it, a lot of niggas be believing it, as far as the, as far as the, the belief of taking the luxury. Who <laughs> like, sound bite right there? Like that's, that's where the belief the belief ends with the luxury ends, nigga. Like, all right, right. I, I believe right, in I the got Panthers until I gotta bust back. Wait, nigga, I didn't say I was ready to get my life up for this shit. <laughs> I believe in the Panthers too. I gotta go hand out that meal every day. Wait, yeah, I didn't I, say I, I believe in them that much, nigga. Niggas believe on the Panthers on October 31st. You feel me? When they can right. dress up and put that beret on, or when it's time for a follow up, like them paid actors, actors and actresses in Atlanta. <laughs> And it's so sick. And I think that's the, that's damn near the sickest shit, right? Like, is that we would, we would, not us, but you feel me, just our people would ever want to be a part of this system that kills us like this. You know, it's like, damn, bro, you, you don't love us. Nigga, you don't look out there and see your cousin, your uncle, your brother, your daddy, you. And that's what that's what we're trying to get on this motherfucker is get back to building community and get back to getting back to motherfuckers really understand what it means to love, to live and love the people. Love the people. Man. We and like you said, it, 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 it makes you be able to run those marathons, right? It makes you be able to get up when you don't want to. Cause because you know you gotta be you gotta be better today than you was yesterday, because the people need you more today. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been stealing that quote from you, that Harry, the Harriet Tubman capacity quote. Bro. <laughs> I've been using that thing like, nigga, Harriet Tubman didn't have capacity. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, capacity is Black Left Twitter's favorite buzzword these days, bro. Uh, capacity. Uh, God, fucking stuff. Golly gee, <laughs> I'm at capacity. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna stop. That's probably thinking too, though, bro. Like. Like you said, I just had a baby, and I be and I be thinking like, damn, bro, I fell off. And he be like, you just had a baby, like I should be doing some more. Maybe we got, I, that's yeah. the thing, right? Like, we always want to feel good about ourselves, right? That especially in this society, right? Capitalism, like they teach you to feel good about yourself because of what you did, feel accomplished. But if you like, really, like you said, like look at it, it's like it's never enough for the people. Yep. And so. I think if we start, and but again, that gets us away from our individual self and us looking at the collective. Like how, how is everyone doing? Everyone's not free yet, so we we haven't done enough. Yeah. yeah. So. Especially people who like, I feel like a lot of folks who is like rooted in like some like revolutionary shit be always talking about collective self care. You know, especially like if you're like if you want to cop out, bro, what's that gonna do to other people in your collective or your organization? You know what I'm saying? That's putting more work on some other people, but like. When I've seen like self-care talked about as like a collective process that reshapes that narrative of the individualistic, oftentimes capitalistic uh, viewpoint, like, ah, oh, I'm at capacity. What does that, what does that really mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we all doing the same work. Like, bro, we. You think I'm a <laughs> you, think, you don't think I'm tired, nigga? <laughs> I miss my mama, nigga, like, the fuck, we got it. But think it's, it comes back to like, what did you say you believe in? What did you say you, 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 you can, you're contributing to, right? Like for us, right? We just posted our new logo. We have made the stance that we are contributing to the new African independence movement. When you take on a stance like that, there are requirements, there are contributions that need to be made. There are dedications that you need to live by. And so if we all have agreed to this, at some point we need to acknowledge 
what we agree to accept and we agree to and step up to that shit. Or just don't make certain declarations, nigga. Responsibly, don't come with declarations. Just don't make declarations. If you make a declaration, you better follow through on that motherfucker. On God. Because if not, who, who are you? What do you stand on? Uh, appreciate yeah. you pulling up on us, bro. We're going to have For you sure. on. Within the next 10 episodes, we got to have you on this motherfucker. Before, before the team you know, is gonna come in, we gonna we gonna we gonna talk real shit. Yeah, yeah. Good. Whenever, just let me know. You know, it's always good. Love y'all. So, yep. Love you too, bro. Love Appreciate you too, bro. Hopping on with us. For sure, for sure. Peace. All right, peace. Talk to the people, bro. My nigga. What to do, my boys? Is that What's my Bessie and a Tessie? What the fuck? Come on, man. There you go. I just did a podcast episode in the. Tesla. <laughs> oh man, like hey, life a little different. So, What's bro, good with y'all? How you doing? I can't complain, bro. I ain't gonna lie, life a little heavy right now, but I'm thugging it out. Got a lot of shit going on. What's good with y'all? Shit, same hype. Thugging, yeah, trying to man. make it through, trying to maintain. Appreciate you hopping on with us. Like I already know, niggas got. A, a, a lot going on. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you making the time for us, though, bro. Yeah, appreciate you, bro. That's all good. I had to. That's so Man. much. From episode one to episode 100, though, you feel me? Like, we Come had to go on, back nigga. to our roots, what? bro. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> like, man, that, that's, that's crazy. That shit real special, bro. Like, <laughs> that's big, bro. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all in a nice looking room and shit. I remember we used to do it at the lab looking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro. We y'all upgraded the that. Right, man. That's crazy. Y'all think it came a long, long way, bro. That shit's wild. Yeah, we crazy. got these bright lights up and shit. It's professional 4K cameras, you know what I'm saying? Shit wild. Shit wild. Blake's so in it, he don't even wear headphones no more. He a real one. Nah, that shit hiding by my hair. <laughs> 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 that shit hiding. I was gonna say. <laughs> Natural with crazy. <laughs> it, it'd be wild, bro, because we um your name come up a lot on the podcast when, when we be reflecting and talking about our supporters and shit. And so I'm glad um we was able to bring you on for this episode, bro. Like I'll we just had we just had one of the OGs on and he was telling us how important it is to like not downplay shit. Um and how to and you know he wants to give us our flowers and we definitely want to do the same for you, bro. Like I don't think you know how important it is to actually like brick and mortar is a very important thing. We talk about space. You actually provided us space for the first time, bro. Um, you fucking sponsored or one of the sponsors for our for our live show at the New Parish. You feel me? So like, in addition to to, to giving space for us, you actually like put money into us as well, not just into our podcast, which is our political education a platform, but also into our organization, bro. You this next crop of fucking this next batch of crop that we got coming out the garden, you know, you donated that. Um, the sign that we have, you donated that. Um, shit, clean even, check, you was there yeah. for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Even shit. coming up with a name, Hella Black, like you helped us come up with that shit. Like, all that shit, you know? So it is dope. That's hard, bro. And my memory's so crazy. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. Yeah. Yo, I don't remember helping y'all come yeah. up with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> but it's, it's great. It's great to hear y'all tell me I was a part of that. But no, it's big to me because, like, I don't have the the bandwidth or the wherewithal to be in the field like y'all and to see y'all doing it coming from the same place we come from niggas grew up together and all the shit to see y'all really be out there like doing the shit that niggas talk about doing to me it's only right since i can't be out there that i find ways to support being out there you know if i can't physically be there if i if it's me giving some money or sending people or doing whatever i can bro you know i'm always here to support and that's what i be telling people because they try to make excuses about why they can't be this and that it's plenty of ways to help you know what i'm saying you just gotta figure out how to help because it's always you know like that's what i respect about y'all is that y'all are really out there and, it, it, and i tell people it's not even just like y'all there are small groups everywhere that are doing the work like people don't actually have to be in the street whether it be for covid reasons or whoop whoop. if you can get out there for sure do that but there are people who are doing the real work and you need to find a way to support those people and help those people and harness that energy because that's what it's about yeah hey, and you look at us bro like the three of us, we all have family in the Panthers. Like we all know our family could have been crossing paths and we not even know. I mean, we've already talked about our family connection, you know what I'm saying? And me and Raj's family right down the street from each other. Like, we all know, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is really an example of um, mm. like, 
multiple generations coming together and, and keeping this shit forward, you know, keeping keeping moving this shit yeah. forward. And that shit wild, bro. Like to really think about that we all have family in the Panthers and we continue in this tradition in our own right. different ways, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit, you know, I'm sure they could have never imagined like what that would look like for the next generation or the next generations after that, you know, that shit. Like the, right. the, the spirit of the Panthers lives on, you know what I'm saying? Right. That, shit, that shit deep. Yeah, man, and I feel like that's a big part of the programs and teaching the kids and teaching the youth what they was doing because they knew it's generational, like each one teach one. And it just, you never know who you gonna teach and how far down the lineage that's gonna go. So yeah, man, that's big. Yeah, bro, we just wanted to thank you, uh, you know, from episode one to a hundred, you know, and hopefully we got a hundred more. And thank you for your continued support. You know, you coming to be a guest on the podcast, you giving us space is amazing, but you've, uh, really supported us and having a material impact on the people, you know, via your donations, via boosting our shit, using, you know, retweeting our shit, posting our shit on your, on, on your Instagrams or whatever other platform. So, you know, I love you, bro. I'm, I'm super grateful. Uh, thank you for always supporting us. It's good, bro. Love y'all too, man. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's always love brother. All right, man. You have a good one. All right, man. Y'all be smooth. Yeah. I right, appreciate you, bro. All right. Peace. Oh, we just keep it going. Yeah, you know. So episode 100, you Live from me? hell. <laughs> Hot as fuck in this room. Baby. It's a and I don't want box. East Coast people talking about, oh, it never get down south, boys. It never gets hot in the Bay. I don't give a fuck. It was 85 degrees yesterday. We don't have no air conditioning in, in our houses unless you live in Antioch, Pittsburgh, Vallejo, Concord, Stockton, wherever else the fuck. I live in Oakland, and it's hot as fuck, and I don't have no air conditioning in my house. You're also wearing a sweatshirt. Yeah, because I mean, like, I guess a video, I don't got no... Decent t-shirt. <laughs> oh, fuck with you. And uh, episode 100, we came with that heat and we in a hot ass room for y'all, but you know, that's what happens when you got a, a, a undying love for the people. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, but nah it's, we wanted to, you know, do this episode and just bring on some core supporters, uh, some of our favorite guests that we've had on and just people who just helped us grow a, a, as human beings. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, it was just to do that, you know, and to bring it on and have this full circle moment uh, for episode 100. Like, this shit big, and it's important that we celebrate ourselves. And we don't typically do that, you know what I'm saying? And I think we're both very, like, humble people and don't really talk about all the successes and shit and just even the try the, all the tribulations we had just to even get to episode 100. Like, it's, it's a lot of shit niggas done been through. Yeah, it's also hard <laughs> but, to, to look at this as an accomplishment when you know the purpose behind it. You yeah, know, like, especially when you... Yeah. Is this is such a uh like I mean I don't know what my words because I, I think of like we have multiple um multiple intentions with the podcast, right? To build community. But I think the number one is to always like educate and to and to raise consciousness, which will in turn you know help unite people, help people, you know, want to love each other, love love themselves. Love um, the people and serve yeah. the people, organize the people. So when you when you moving from a place like the goal is to educate, it's like you never really. This feel, is what you're supposed to as do as a teacher. I don't think you ever really feel like um, finished with your work or feel like you know you often downplay it. I guess, but yeah, there's always more work to do. That's that's part of fucking oppression. I think. Yeah. But I think in the midst of that, it is important to recognize, like, damn, bro, we just did a hundred things, bro. Hundred episodes, bro. Sustained. We built something. You got to think about like, how many shows have 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 surfaced over the last over over our hundred episodes. You think about how many organizations have started and ended over the last four years with the starting of, of people's programs, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we, we building things that, that sustain that, that you can point to qualitative and quantitative impact, which is something that we strive for, you know, yeah, and that's, that's the basis of our work. And I'm also grateful for the folks that, you know, that couldn't, every guest that we've had that wasn't on no sucker shit in the past eight months, I'm grateful we had a lot of guests that came on here who I no longer respect. But you know, yeah, I'm gonna keep I, it a band. Fuck y'all niggas. For the ones that I do respect, you know, <laughs> that I that I still respect and who have been um uh, who have shown through through uh practice that they that they do stand on the politics that we came on this space that we politics principles of know, revolution that we created and that we thought they stood for, which is why we opened this platform to them, you know, to the people who did follow through on that and did turn out to be principled, solid individuals. Appreciate y'all. Uh, appreciate y'all. You couldn't get on the podcast. Shout out my nigga Q. Uh, shout out Deshaun. Shout out uh, Tasia. Shout out. Um, 
Sankofa. Sankofa. Yeah. Who else can we get on the pod? That have been good. Shout out all my folks on People's Programs. Ty, Yemi, Ayana, Kelly, Raven, AB. Am I missing somebody? Shout out uh, everybody, everybody that has supported us. Uh, yeah. Straight up. Shout out my nigga Jim. Um, did we say Jaleel? No, yeah, that's a given. Jaleel, yeah. <laughs> that's a Welcome given. Home. <laughs> Welcome Touchdown, home. Touchdown, getting you straight to me? it. <laughs> Game we got a hundred more, and I hope to have those people back on the podcast. Yeah. I hope for us to have more youth on the podcast so we can start getting this up and this fucking cross generational shit going on. Uh, and yeah, I'm just grateful for the next 100 episodes. Again, I want us to keep building on the politic. I hope that more programs are launched and sustained. Yeah as a result of the readings that we doing. Keep growing, keep transforming, and, and keep centering the needs, bro. That's all we can do. You know what I'm saying? To keep learning and committing to that. We do that shit, we gonna be fine. <laughs> thousand percent, you know what I'm saying? And I encourage, you know, folks to grow too. Grow with us, learn with us, build with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit can be done. This work can be done. The things we do in other people's programs, all that things, all those things can be done if you're committed, have a goal, have politics and have principles and always putting the politic in command, putting liberation as the primary vessel for your goals. Shit can be done and it don't gotta take a lot of y'all. You feel me? It started off me and Delincey. It's family, you feel me? Like, that's how it started. Get into the field if you can. If you can't get in the field. Support where you can. Support where you can. If you're not in the field, but all you do is talk about shit that happens on in the field, you should probably, you know, take a step back stop taking up all that space and then start doing something and, you know, some reflecting inside of yourself to realize why aren't you getting outside if you have all the capacity to do so um, and start doing some revisiting around capacity, what capacity mean? Cause nigga, we all tired, but that's why it's called struggle. Cause it's hard. And the struggle um, continues. <laughs> and I cannot stress this enough. Fuck the police. Fuck all fascists. Fuck the ops, nigga. Fuck neoliberals. Fuck all you informants. Fuck all you chaos agents. Fuck um, you colonizers, nigga. <laughs> fuck the nonprofit sector. Fuck Joe Biden, nigga. Fuck every president. Fuck Obama, nigga. Free Palestine. Fuck Africom, nigga. Free the land. Free the people. Free them all. Uh, we are own liberators. Y'all know. That's just a little bit. That's what it is. A. It ain't on me. It's in me. But it's, it's also on me. Take that however you want to take it. Um, people's programs, we fundraising for a mobile clinic right now. Tapping with that shit. I got to say shout out to my nigga uh, Marcus, my nigga Juice Man, just, you know, $15,000 donation to our shit. Shout out All Black, shout out Offset Jim. Shout out, um, I'm going to shout out. Shout out Jacqueline. Shout out Jacqueline. We can, we can shout out some non-Africans now. Shout out Ghazi, <laughs> shout out Nima, the folks at Empire for always supporting our shit. Um, Justice will be served. I'm going to leave it at Whether that. Whether you want it or not. Patreon.com slash Black Pot. Episode 100.